Do you see that? Looks kind of like the moon is crying. Here, let's fly up and see if we can get a closer look. This is a shooting star, or a comet, or a meteor, about to be a meteorite. Whatever you'd like it to be, it is amazing and really cool. Eventually, these will fall down to the world below, which is going to take quite some time to do because I'm, I'm really far up here. But I can get really, really close and give you guys a much closer, more beautiful look at these things. They're really cool. Oh my gosh. What do they do? Well, that's what this episode's all about. Astral Sorcery 110 update. And not Minecraft 110. We're just talking 110 is the uh, update number of this one. Usually when these land down on the ground, they leave a big impression. In this case, it actually just crashed in the water. But I got a bunch of loot from it. Now let's go back to base and take a look. There we are, back at base. All right, so I'm sure many of you have uh, seen some astral sorcery shenanigans on this channel in the past. Well, it has returned, at least for this wonderful update that Hellfire PvP, the maker of astral sorcery, has added in. Uh, so the comet, uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to call it a comet in the, in this case at least, um, dropped a few random items. You might get some, some random loot, and it, it will also drop potentially something like this, shining casing. If you're fast enough, you'll be able to get one of these things. Now, when those comets hit the ground, by default, they will explode like TNT. They leave a big crater. If you want to turn those off, you can do so in the configs. Also, how often do they land? How often do they land? When do they land? You know, usually in the middle of the night, you'll have a chance of one of those happening. It's at, at most once every night. Otherwise, it'll probably be a little bit more often or a little bit less often than that, like every few nights or something. But uh, that that's not the point. Let, let's talk about this, the shining casing. Something is shining inside the casing. Right click to open. It's kind of like a little loot crate. Uh, let's get into uh, survival mode here. There we go. And now I can open this up and we can take a look. And what do we have? We have a Lucent Scroll. The scroll has some pale scribblings on it. Right click to add it to your tome. Wait, what? Add this to my tome? You mean my, my astral tome? Do I put it in here? No, these don't go in here. This is a little something different. A new mechanic added among many others. And this, uh, th I might actually split this up into multiple episodes. But for now, let's take a look at this. If I right click, there we go. Gain knowledge about Physidilic Prime. Physolytic Prime, excuse me, impact of mythical creatures. It's fantastic. So if I open up my Astral Tome, you'll see on the side we've got our, you know, I've, I've already unlocked everything on here. In fact, I, I kind of used commands to do so. I, I had gotten so far and then I was like, all right, I'm just going to do commands. But anyway, that's not the point. We're talking about knowledge. We now have Physodelic Prime, Impact of Mythical Creatures. Click on this thing as the internal reservoir of an ever-shifting fountain is finite, and so on. This will give you like a little bit of flavor text about astral sorcery. It might also give you a little bit of tutorial knowledge and stuff like that. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm in creative, or I was in creative, and I, I spawn these in, and therefore, once I log back out and back in again, it, the, this knowledge is going to be gone. But if you are in survival, my friends, and you get some of these uh, little pieces of knowledge and you use them in your book or, or you just click it so that it becomes, you know, a, a knowledge piece or even a bit of a um, uh, it's you have a chance of also getting like a little uh, a new astral chart that you can find on there and gain some knowledge as well. It will permanently stay with you uh, any time that you play Astral Sorcery. It will actually go into your Minecraft file, and it will, that's right, stay with you just like your Minecraft skin, uh, more or less. You can delete it from your, your Minecraft files and so on, but it will more or less stay with you for uh, as long as you have Astral Sorcery in one of your mod packs. And it'll it's just knowledge. That's it. So you don't have to keep on unlocking knowledge all the time with uh, Astral Sorcery. And don't worry, it's, it's nothing really major, you know, like uh, you're just going to be able to jump ahead chapter by chapter or something. No, it's not. That. It's just these little knowledge things that will tell you a little bit about things that are going on with, uh, you know, different items, creatures, uh, dimensions, 
uh, astral charts and so on, uh, maybe even different perks and whatnot. So that is one of the one of the many new things in this uh, update, the 110, uh, the shooting star update, at least that's what I'm going to call it. And I don't mean Minecraft 110. This is Minecraft 112.2 in case you're confused. So um, let's talk about some other minor things here. Now, I have a bunch of these uh, set out for reminders. Let's start with the conversion one. This, this has actually always been working. It was just a little bit broken. There was actually a long-term bug. People did not know uh, what was involved with the conversion one. So if you're not familiar with the conversion one, how does it work? There we go. I am now in creative mode. Basically, if you have a block, let's say marble arch uh, in my inventory, and let's say I've got stacks of these. Because I'm in survival, it will just spawn them in. I can sneak, right-click, and then I can convert other blocks into that block as you can see here, I can turn all these grass blocks into marble arch. Now, here's the, the catch. Um, it, it, that was how people were using it. Now, it's a little bit more unique. Um, and this also works the same with the, the, uh, the building one, or rather the formation one. Here, let me grab one of these as well. Uh, this, this works with both. So if I sneak and right-click on this, I can just keep on holding this down and add in all of these to a palette. You see now on the left, all of these are there. And this is on a building one. So if I want, I can randomly start building these. Now it's like, oh, I'm making the same pattern over and over again. Well, just wait a second, and it will convert to something else. And it will rotate through this random uh, configuration of blocks and so on. So therefore, you can actually add some randomness to the paths or the things that you want to build. And it doesn't have to be uh, just like one material anymore. Now, if you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is left click and everything goes away. If you ju and then you just want one item. There you go. I'm only making regular stone block. There we go. If I'm in creative there because uh, I didn't have any in my inventory and so on. So if I want to, let's actually make a bunch of these. Okay. All that is now stone block. And if I take this conversion wand and do the same thing that I just did a moment ago and uh, click all these things here, sneak right click, therefore making a palette of material, and I actually hover up here, I will turn this stone shelf into a mixture. And you can see that some of the textures are actually rotating. So if you wait long enough, you might see something that pleases you or whatnot. There we go. That's what I wanted. Perfect. So now I have this random placement of all these blocks that I had in my palette. So it's it's a, a it's actually a feature that has been a bug for some time. So that that is absolutely fantastic for builders. Uh, people I think are going to love that. It's excellent new uh, uh, addition even though it was already in there and just wasn't quite working as intended before. So what else do we have? Uh, little tidbits here and, and don't worry there is plenty more to come. There, there's great stuff. We're going to talk about this. The, um, the cave illuminator. It no longer requires visibility to the sky to work. So here, allow me to go into game mode three, or basically I can see down below. You can see that there are some caves that are lit up here and there. It's because I did actually place one of these uh, already in the past, and I, I picked it up real quick. Also, I have an illumination one, and you know that you can actually craft an illumination one with a different color of dye and change it from yellow to another color. Like for instance, this one is uh, was combined with black, so therefore it makes these black light sources. If you take a cave illuminator down, by default it will make the yellow ones, but if you right click with your illumination wand, you can change it to the color that the Ill illumination wand is set to. So now it's going to place black. Uh, lights out uh, in the cave under underground. So that's really fantastic. If you, for those that want to use this in the underdark uh, or the deep dark, rather, this will now work there because it does not need visibility to the sky. Of course, it will not place above it like before, but it will place below it. So therefore, when you first spawn in, you place it, it will start lighting up a large area below you. And it also works at a much faster rate. Not tremendous, but you can see already that this uh, long shaft tunnel that I made is being lit up. In fact, many things are, and you probably are getting some sparkles on my screen because of the armor that I'm wearing, but you can see that there are many things lighting up currently by the illumination 
Uh, the, the, this thing is just fantastic now. It works so quickly. And when you pick it up, this is even better. Just wait. Let's actually just break it. Oh no, it's broken. All the lights are gone, right? No, they're, they're all still down there. They don't disappear. They stick around until a block is placed or an illumination wand is used to turn them off. So yeah, a really nice add-on as well for things. I, I really like that one. So what else do we have? We have, uh, I talked about persistent knowledge, which is the knowledge that sticks with you uh, in your astral tome. Talked about uh, the conversion wand fix, the uh, the different things with the uh, that casing right here. Actually, I, I used it. This is why I saved one just for this case, so I could show you guys. Um, now, remember, you can get multiple different uh, things from this, as well as different loot from the, uh, the comets. But here, let's talk about the Domic Resonator. Domic Resonator. Recipe is a little bit confusing. It's on the Starlight Crafting Altar, and you take a Fosic Resonator like so. And it will make one because it, the reason I say it's confusing is because if you look it up in Astral Sorcery and you look up Domic, it doesn't look like the one that I have in my hand. It looks like this Fosic one. But if you look, it says Fosic, Icosic, Domic. That's because this one has all three in the uh, the menu. So therefore, a Domic Resonator is just the first upgrade of your standard Fosic Resonator. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. What does it do? It does fantastical things, my friends. All right, so it, it can show you the range. Uh, for those that are familiar with Batania, think of it as like a mana monocle. In this case, I have this tree, and this works better at night, so let me change it. Okay, there we go. It is now nighttime. I'm actually going to stand over here a little bit. Uh, and you can see we've got our little tree beacon here, which is harvesting this mega spruce uh, that I've got going on. So what can I do? I can see the range that I can plant saplings around this in a general sense. You can see kind of the, if, if you go too far away from uh, the item that you're looking at, this will actually shut off. But you can see that there's a general outline uh, about where you can have saplings working within this sphere. So if I right click again, nothing happens. It will stay there. Even if I take this, put it in my inventory, whatever, if I drop it on the ground, actually, I don't know how I got two of these in my, in my inventory. It's, it's still an effect that's on the item itself. So therefore, how do I turn it off? Well, you can either pick up the item in question or click on something else or just walk out of its range. In this case, I'm going to walk out of its range and it will shut off. So there you go. The, uh, the tree beacon is still uh, doing its, its work there. And I have other things that you can use this on. For instance, I have this set up, a Lucerna ritual, which will, for a very big distance, eliminate pretty much all mob spawns. So if I right click this, it will then show a massive dome effect uh, out for a very long distance. You can see, uh, let's actually hit F1. There we go. Now you can see it, it's out on the farther than my render distance is set out right now, which I think is like uh, 10 chunks, maybe maybe 12. But you see it, the ritual is really, really far out there. So it's it's going to go for quite some distance. But that's basically what this is good for, is to let you know these types of things. And in this case, um, rather than pick up the crystal and put it back down again, I'm going to click on this and just walk out of its range. And then I should be good. All right. And that is just the beginning. The next part is going to be the epic part of Astral Sorcery. The 110 Shooting Star update. Oh, you guys are going to love the next part. So, I hope to see you tune in for that one. Be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and stick around for more Astral Sorcery update news. If you haven't already checked it out, join our Discord. I've put a few, uh, I've put a few clues in there, and I've already been talking with uh, some of the patrons about some of the changes. It is tremendous with how much you can customize yourself now. Anyway, I hope that's enough of a taste of what's to come. So... Till next time, folks, be sure to uh, sub, tell everybody else about the channel. Till then, I'll see ya.